In this video, we're going to use the double integration method to calculate the deflection when we have a point load on a simply supported beam. This is quite often the first example we do for most other problems. However, we encounter a problem here where we're going to have two bending moment equations based on whether we're from A at the left hand side of the beam up until the point load in the middle or whether we're going from the middle of the beam, so L upon 2, all the way to L. So we'll end up with two bending moment functions. Before, as ever, what we need to do is calculate the reactions. And for this, we use free body diagram of the entire beam. So we have R A Y on the left hand side, R B Y on the right hand side. We have an R A X, which we know is going to be equal to zero. And right in the middle of the beam, we have a point load P. And finally, just to finish the free body diagram, we have some dimensions so L upon two, L upon two. And to get our support reactions, we do some of the forces in the y direction. So we have R A Y plus R B Y equals P. Uh, two unknowns, one equation. However, using moments or the fact that the beam is symmetrical, we can quickly realize that R A Y equals R B Y, which equals P upon two. So now we have the reactions, we can proceed to write our bending moment equations. And for this we use free body diagram of a portion of the beam before making a cut. So we're going from the left hand end in this case, we have R A Y. We could have a shear force acting at the point we're looking at and we could have a bending moment and I'll call this M X and then the dimension from the left hand end to the point that we're considering is a distance X. So taking moments about the point X we can quickly write so moments about X we can write that going in the anti-clockwise direction, um, and let's call it a function of x instead of just mx, equals going in the clockwise direction, r a y multiplied by the lever arm x. And this applies for where x is less than or equal to zero and all the way to where the point load P is applied. So that is at L upon two. We can now look at the right hand side of the beam. Again, drawing a free body diagram. Before making a cut in the beam. So we still have R A Y. Then we have the point load P is now applied at this left hand end. We could have a shear force and we could have a moment. And we're assuming it's going in the anti-clockwise direction. So now if we take moments about this point X, so this distance all the way here is X. This distance here would be X minus L upon two. So taking moments about the point X, Going in the anti-clockwise direction now, we have M of X plus we have P multiplied by the lever arm, which is X minus L upon two. And that should be all equal to the moment going in the clockwise direction, which is R A Y multiplied by the lever arm x. So we can tidy this up so that this moment function, 
So it equals RAY, which we already know is P upon 2, multiplied by the lever arm X. And then we'll take the other term over to this right-hand side. So it's a minus, and that's P, multiplied by the lever arm X minus L upon 2. And we're going to leave it in this form, but it is important to know where this bending moment function is applicable. So we have L upon, so where X goes from, so where X could go from L upon 2 all the way to the end of the beam, so therefore the distance L. So at this point, we have two bending moment functions. And if we remind ourselves of the formula that we are required to use to calculate deflection, so we're going to be using the formula that dv, where v is the deflection by dx, equals the integral of m over ei dx, or that v, so this could also be the rotation theta, or that the deflection is equal to the double integral of m, which is actually a function of x over ei dx. So we have to integrate the moment function. And as we integrate the moment function, we're, do, we're going to do that one, two times. We're going to introduce constants of integration. The problem we have now with this problem is we have two bending moment functions, and we're going to end up with four constants of integration. Okay. That's not a problem necessarily, and you can actually solve the problem with two bending moment functions and identify four constants of integration. However, what we're going to do is find a nice way that we can circumvent this problem. And the way that we can circumvent this problem is by the use of a mathematical tool called Macaulay's brackets. So first of all, let's write the moment function just to the right hand side of the beam, the second one we wrote. So that was equal to P upon 2 multiplied by x minus p into x minus l upon 2. And at the moment, this is only applicable for the right-hand side of the beam. But using a small mathematical trick, we're going to make this applicable for the entire beam. So we've replaced the round brackets by these angle brackets. And these angle brackets are what we call Macaulay's brackets. And they have a beautiful property that if the value inside the brackets is negative, then the value is equal to naught. If the value inside the brackets is positive, then, then we take the magnitude of what's inside the brackets. So, as you can see, as we go along the beam, before we meet L upon 2, so some way along the left-hand side of the beam, we have the original term P upon 2 times X, which comes from the reaction at the left-hand side, minus P into X minus L upon 2. And so L upon 2 would always be bigger than x, and so it would become negative on the left-hand side of the beam, which means that this would become 0 whenever x is less than L upon 2, and therefore we can neglect the term. When we're greater, when x becomes greater than L upon 2, this term in the Macaulay brackets becomes positive, and we now take it into account. So let's proceed with this and see whether we can write the bending moment functions and then get the rotation and deflection of the beam. So let's just finish this off. Because we've got the more Macaulay brackets, we're going to say that 
this is now applicable for the entire length of the beam from x equals 0 right the way to x equals L. Now we're going to proceed with our double integration method. I'm going to take the EI to the left hand side and we write down that EI d2v by dx squared was equal to the moment function so that is now equal to p upon 2 multiplied by x minus p into the bracket of x minus l upon 2 and now we can go ahead and integrate so we get e i dv by dx equals now the integral of all of this expression so this first term becomes p x squared upon 4 and now this second term becomes and what we do is we treat the whole of this bracket like it was any other differential variable so, or any variable in calculus. So now we have P upon two multiplied by this value in the bracket stops as it is, and the whole bracket becomes squared. And to make the integral complete, we add the constant of integration C1. And we do exactly the same again for the function for the displacements. So E I multiplied by the displacement or deflection equals P X cubed upon 12 minus P upon 6 into X minus L upon 2 all cubed plus C 1 X plus C 2. And now we have our functions for the rotation and the deflection. We can proceed as before and identify our constants of integration. So in this case, having a look at this function for the deflections that we've still got on the screen if the def deflection is zero which we know that at x equals zero because of the boundary condition that the deflection must be equal to zero first term disappears second term we have x minus l upon 2 x is zero so we have minus l upon 2 inside the macaulay bracket so it becomes a zero so that term disappears then we have C1x, again, x is equal to 0. So this term disappears, leaving us that C2 is equal to 0. And we also know, still keeping this function for the deflection on the screen, that at x equals L, we know that the deflection is also equal to zero at this place. So the left-hand side of the equation becomes zero equals PL cubed upon 12 minus P upon six. And into brackets, we've got L minus L upon two all cubed which we can tidy up l minus l upon 2 is simply l upon 2 plus c1 l so we could use this expression and rearrange it to find c1 alternatively we know because the beam is symmetric that x at x equals to l upon 2 the rotation of the beam must be equal to zero. So we can go up to our EI dv, x, dv by dx expression and substitute wherever we have x, l upon two. So let's do that. 
So in this case now we have P into L upon 2 squared divided by 4, so 0 equals that, minus P upon 2 into L upon 2 minus L upon 2, that was all squared, plus a C1. So this middle term disappears immediately, and we can rearrange to find that C1 equals minus PL squared divided by 16. So now we have both constants of integration. We can rewrite our expressions for the for the deflections. So we can now rewrite that E I multiplied by the deflection equals P X cubed upon 12 minus P upon 6 into x minus l upon 2 all cubed minus now the c1 term which is p l squared divided by 16 multiplied by x and we know intuitively for this situation that the maximum deflection is going to occur at the mid span so we could use this for any point x along the beam but for the maximum deflection, x is equal to L upon 2. So we'll substitute L upon 2 into this expression. And so we're going to get that EI times the maximum deflection is equal to So now we have our P multiplied by L upon 2 cubed divided by 12 minus, and we can see this middle term, we're going to have an L upon 2 minus an L upon 2, so that will become 0. So we only need to worry about this third term. So now we have P multiplied by L squared upon 16 multiplied by the distance x which is l upon 2. So we're going to tidy this up a little bit, perform some of the multiplications. So we get p l cubed upon 96 minus p l cubed upon 32 so now we need to find a common denominator. So first of all, let's convert this one. So by multiplying by three into 96s. So that is minus two PL cubed upon 96. And then we'll divide out by two and get ourselves the V max, where V is the deflection, equals minus PL cubed upon 48EI. And remembering that the minus sign is for the downwards direction. And if you choose, you can confirm this. A quick Google search will give you what this is, but this is how we derive the maximum deflection for this low case. And these are one classic. Like we got the 5 over 384, now we have the 1 over 48 EI. Our classic formulas that we use for very quickly calculating the deflections we're likely to see in common scenarios. Or even if the point load was slightly off center, we would use this formula to give us a very quick guesstimate before, before using detailed calculations in design.